Welcome to Deep Thought. American Gods Review, right? And I'm not really, um, there's a uh, show on the Stars Network, American Gods, and I'm not really reviewing the network, I mean the uh, show itself, the episode itself per se, but just the whole series. I really like it because it's deep. It's like my kind of deep, right? Because the premise of American Gods is that you have a bunch of old gods from different um, from different uh, pantheons from around the world who came to America, you know, with their people. Like you have Odin, he came with the Nordic folks. Uh, you have a Nazi, a Nazi uh, who came on, um, you know, he came with some, um, you know, American prisoners of war, right? Um, from Africa, you had, um, you know, some from the Slavic region and stuff. And even on, um, you know, you had, uh, one of the guys that came, actually came over, came over in the seventies from, uh, Iran, like the, uh, you know, the Arab Peninsula, right? And that even, that's, and she's an interesting character because she's not so much a god as a, a jinn and, um, which is, um, you know, elemental type of deity from that region, you know, which is, you know, jinn is like the root word of the word genie. So, you know, they, they had some stuff with them. And it's interesting with the jinn because they have a very strong sexual aura. Because like the, um, you know, in American gods, they, you know, they, they like regular cats. Like you see them, you don't think anything of them. Right, you know, because you have a Nazi. That's that's the brother, you know. He he's just a he's a tailor, you know. He's a tailor, trickster, and everything, right? And um, you know, the main focal point is this character called Shadow Moon, who um, you know anybody who's actually read the book or anything realize he's a god too. He just don't know it, right? <laughs> he just doesn't know who he is. Right, and it was deep because it it was the it's, uh, the second season episode the other night, you know, season premiere, and you know they also showed, um, you know, last season, and I'm gonna tell you what it got deep because, um, you know, among the American, you know, among the gods, old gods, you know, some of them managed to like you know last like, like Jesus. And it was deep how they did it because they had several versions because they said different cultures had a different version of them. And you had plenty here. And I was like, wow, that was deep. Now, the thing is, they, they're they about to get into a war with the new gods in America. And the new gods, they're not like the old ones. And, you, you know, it's, um, you know, you got one, uh, one god called Media, right? Think about it. Think about it. We worship Media. Media tells us what to do. You got another one uh, called Mr. World. He's more into technology. Well, you know what? I haven't figured out Mr. World yet. He just runs everything. But you do have one guy called Technology Boy because, you know, people worship in that technology. Now, if they have any more new gods, it's more like, okay, what are people worshiping now? And that's what made it deep because understand, you know, when you talk about deities, gods, and everything, isn't that uh, talking about the big god, the creator? These, I mean, when you look at any, when you look at any um, pantheon from around the world, right? And of course, you get some people who will say, "Oh, they just myths or something." And of course, people who follow it. Like you still have people. You actually do have people who follow Odin, right? And Thor and all of that. Those aren't just Marvel characters. They actually follow that. And of course, you know, you had. Um, you know, the African de deity of Nazi. Now, I'm not, for, I'm not sure about any formal sect that follows that. I mean, after all, this was fiction, but I do know, like, if they really want to get interesting, right, they would have uh, maybe some Yoruba gods and Akan gods follow, you know, show up, but that'll get too deep for them. I do know they have a couple of the gods who are uh, comedic. And they both played by brothers. I gotta give Neil. I gotta give them credit for like doing that, right? But they they not a major part of the story. They kind of stay off to themselves, right? And you know it was just 
you know, one of the big things was the old gods, they were just like, you know, people ain't worshiping us anymore. You know, we become irrelevant. And, you know, that, that kind of comes to a deep question. Do we create our gods? Now, I know, you know, of course, people would, um, you know, in, um, you know, whether they're Christian or Muslim would say, of course not. But, you know, just suspend your disbelief for a second, you know. It's like, what is a God if you don't worship it? Or even if you are Christian or Muslim or Jewish, what if you, you know, what if you have a critical mass of people who stop worshiping Jesus or stop paying homage to Jesus or stop paying homage to Allah, you know? If those gods and like of different systems leave the hearts of people, right? That's a deep thing to think about. That's a deep thing. And I think, you know, watching American Gods, of course, it get, you know, it has the action and everything, but then it has some deep stuff. And, you know, they actually, um, you know, bring in some other things because, like I said, the djinn were there, but they're not technically gods, right? And then uh, you have a seven-foot leprechaun. <laughs> it's funny because he said, who said a leprechaun had to be short? <laughs> You know, and they were like in the episode, they were joking around about how sexy mermaids are and everything. And you kind of think about that whole, like the energies, because one of the things, the deities in each of the systems, they represent energies. You know, it wasn't, and it wasn't just like just some random thing. Now, you know, how real they are depends on how you perceive them. Like if you perceive the energy, if you perceive them as pure energy, very real. You know, if you like, uh, for example, in um, the Yoruba pantheon, um, and that's not really the proper term, but we're just using it for reference. You know, you have the uh, goddess Oshun, or in the Kemetic, be Hetheru. Uh, I believe in the Nordic system, be Freya, right? But, or in the Greek system, that would be Aphrodite. So what does that represent? Does that represent an actual individual or does that represent the energy, right? And that's what, the, you know, that's what the different deities and different systems represent. They represent a certain energy. Like you have a lot of women, like if we lived in a more traditional society, you get some of these women out here that you call in thoughts and all of that will probably be saying, oh, no, nah, that's just a negative side of Het Heru or Oshun. Or you get some of those women who are more classy about it, but they got their full feminine sensuality. That's that's Oshun. Or you get the guys who, you know, got that energy of, uh, you know, being a king or something. You know, Heru, Shango, you know, or the hero, Thor, you know. Depends on, you know, depends on it. Or, you know, you got the warrior gods or the trickster gods because, you know, this... Uh, American God has a Nazi, and he's a trickster. So basically, he could be saying something, but actually, um, in African traditional religion, depending on depending on the group, like Eshu is very powerful, or Legba, depending on how you want to look at them. Very powerful because they open the gate to the underworld. You got to go through them. And the trickster, you know, the trickster type, that's actually a type of energy that survived, uh, you know, when, uh, you know, Africans were being made slaves and brought to America. You know, that's that whole Br'er Rabbit or, you know, that trickster. Because it's like, you know, it's like, okay, the trickster, you know, might not have that weapon, but the trickster, like, mess with you in a certain way. Like, black comedians have that trickster energy, right? So, I mean, it, it gets deeper. It, it, it gets deeper. But American gods, you know, I like how they I like how they bring it. Like, it's definitely something to check out, something to think about, how they portray, like, you know, the different gods and stuff. And, you know, ultimately, who wins the war? Now, I didn't read the book, so I have no, I don't, I have no spoiler on, like, who wins. But you got to think which one's more important, right? Now, it's interesting when the female character, the female Jen, um, her name was Bilquis, who had been the Queen of Sheba, her character was like, hey, you know what? They gave me the means to spread my message, so I don't see a reason to go to war with them, all right? And, you know, of course, she made a deal with media. No, not media, technology and stuff, and, you know, media can spread the message, can sell it. So it's like, boom. So it is deep. So definitely check it out. If you got stars, check it out. It can be a little weird, though, a little weird. 
but like the show. So anyway, that's all I got for now. Y'all have a great day. Peace and blessings. <laughs>